about speed. It's all about who can adjust to this new time control, yep. this new time format. And two points for the winner in the blitz uh, or um, in the tie breaks, one point for the loser overall. And here we go. Here we go. It's a King's Port opening from Anish Giri. No more English opening. And it's the Sicilian instead. This is very standard stuff. Um, this is the opening repertoire that Carlson was relying upon in the 2018 World Championship against Caruana. So lots of trades early on. Now Black's Queen coming out, putting some pressure on White's Knight in the middle of the board. Now, okay, White coming up with a temporary peace sacrifice. Magnus raising his eyebrows. Um, the White Bishop there is attacked. So if Black's Knight was captured, White's Light Square Bishop would have dropped off Anish Giri. He must have hit Magnus Carlsen with this opening surprise. The world champion slightly frowning. He's confused. Black is a piece up, but he can't preserve his piece. Black's extra knight in the middle of the board will drop next. If it moves, then the black queen would fall prey to white's dark squared bishop. So that's a pin and quite an annoying one for Magnus to face. Mm -hmm. And uh, this act, this line has actually been played before in 2000 between Daniel Campora and uh, an internet, I think, grandmaster Hatan Batar from Mongolia, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um, strong players. Very strong players. Okay, and in that particular game, Black responded with supporting the knight with a pawn. Okay, so Black's e-pawn can push forward and defend the knight in the center. That won't preserve the knight long term, but it does cling on one more move to that knight. So maybe you can take advantage of that move. What is Magnus doing with his mouse? He hasn't clicked on any squares. He hasn't clicked on any pieces yet. He's about to give up his queen. Is that right? Oh my God, Magnus Carlsen has just given up his queen. What? Um, he's going to get three pieces in return. But look at this, the black knight, I said it was pinned. It cannot move. It stepped back, capturing a bishop. And then white's bishop took a queen. Right now, it's a crazy imbalance. White has a queen. Black has a knight and two bishops in return. So actually, three pieces, they add up to nine. A queen worth nine. It is roughly balanced. But when a queen is on the board, it's all about king safety. And black's king is a clear target in the middle later on. Yeah, and I have to say one thing as well. It's all about how those three pieces can coordinate. If they cannot coordinate in a good way, don't ever sacrifice yeah. your queen. They're all asleep, three... Black's pieces. Exactly. We should mention as well, White cannot take Black's knight right now on that left side with a pawn because then Black's rook in the corner would come down and take White's rook. So there's another pin on this A line. Uh, Black, his knight will survive. But Magnus Carlsen... I've played him before many times at Blitz. He, if you give him an artistic choice, he'll go for it, especially in the Blitz games. But it's extremely risky from the world champion. He's really gambling at this early stage. Like Yvanka says, it's all about coordination, peace coordination. But right now, Black is a mile away, an age away from coordinating mm -hmm. his pieces. The first move that I would consider is this move that uh, Anish has just played and uh, entice the knight to step backwards and then start moving forwards. And uh, Anish is uh, real, he's reading my mind. This is what I want to do. Yeah, and there we saw Magnus, he almost pre-moved retreating his knight because he's also reading uh, Anish's mind, your mind, Javanka. He's expecting these moves and Magnus is about to move his central knight in front of the Black mm -hmm. King out of the way. He's clicked on that piece. Which way is he going to go with that knight, though? Um, yeah, he's danced around too much, too long already with the black knights. It's really scary for the world champion. The black bishops, they are the problem pieces. They are yet to enter the battle. Okay. And uh, Anish Giri driving the knight backwards, attacking it. And uh, the knight has a big problem. It has to move to the edge of the board. Oh. This is, uh, and then again, what's it doing on the edge of the board? It can get locked out of the game. And suddenly, it will be a queen against two minor pieces, and that's not sufficient. Yeah, and that's why Magnus pushes a pawn on this right side. Firstly, he's trying to break down the integrity of white's pawn structure, those five advanced white pawns, but he's also trying to find an escape route for that black knight trapped on the right, on the edge, uh, just in case, as Yovanka mentions, it gets trapped. So he's trying to open up his black rook as well. I think he's committed now, Magnus Carlsen. The black king is too far away from castling. It needs to stay in the center. It needs to hide in plain sight. And after a trade of pawns, black's rook has opened up. Look at the evaluation bar. Yet to, yeah. <laughs> uh, yet to settle down, yet to make up its mind. The reason I don't like this at all from Anish Giri is because black is now maybe got a target. Black is going to try and attack the white king. Look at this. He's pushed a pawn forward, daring Anish Giri to play en passant, which has just happened, capturing the pawn as if it just moved one, uh, one square. So you can sometimes um, prevent your opponent from bypassing your own pawn. But 
Magnus now has opened up his light squared bishop, which, which was previously asleep. And now look at this, developing his rook across the board horizontally. That's rare. That That's is rare. Unique. But uh, I do think that white can copy as well. So he can get inspired by black's last move and also move his rook on the same line, two squares, and try to use the third row. And uh, Anish goes for a different option where he just locks out this black rook. And Magnus, wow, he is playing aggressive chess. He pushes his pawn forward, attacking the knight, driving it backwards and saying to saying to Anish, hey, every capture that you make is going to suit my pieces. But look at this, Yvanka, because mm -hmm. look at White's pawns right now. He's thrown everything forward. All of White's pawns are on the fourth rank. There's also one on the sixth rank. He's not caring at all about pawns, neither side about pieces of pawns. They're not even counting, I think, anymore who's ahead of material. Right now, that white pawn is attacking Black's rook on the edge of the board. That pawn can actually just be taken by a Black knight, but then White would gain time attacking the Black pieces and forcing the Black pieces backwards. So Magnus Carlsen, is he, he's given up his queen already. Is he going to ignore his rook as well? Or is he going to move his rook? Is he going to take a pawn? So many choices for the world champion. This position is just crazy. I think even in the two players' minds, they are not sure who has the advantage. I'm definitely not sure. The evaluation bar is definitely not sure. This one is one of the wildest chess games I've seen probably ever, but definitely throughout the tour. Yeah, um, and I can tell you, top engine choice is knight take capture the pawn. Second is for black just to ignore the rook mm -hmm. and just capture the knight. Yeah, okay, he takes the pawn, so he goes for the uh, recommended move. And now after white gives up a pawn with the check, black recaptures and now white's knight has jumped in. Magnus is under check. We see on his screen, the king is highlighted. Wow. That just shows it's check, but he's getting ready to click his dark square bishop and take that white knight. And uh, it looks like it's happened. The black bishop took a knight and Anish had pre-moved to recapture with the white queen. That happened instantly. And now the black knight retreating. It's still two knights and a bishop for the white queen. So roughly material balance. But look at this, white is trying to get to the black king, trying to open up lines, trying to find a path through. So far, Black's knight, bishop, they're controlling squares. There's no check. And if there's no check, maybe Black is safe. And maybe if, Black is okay. And if there's no check and no threat of checkmate or anything, then probably it means that Black can go on the offensive as well. So Anish pushing forward a pawn, trying to lock down the lines. Okay. But Black's king can start running. Or Black can even take a pawn on the side of the board with the rook on that left flank. Suddenly... Okay, Magnus retreats his knight, just acting as a defensive piece now. I'm slightly surprised because that knight was preventing White's remaining rook from getting to the center. But Magnus, he's confident he's going to survive. Knights are a king's best friend, and there's two of them defending mm -hmm. the black king. And uh, Magnus is just saying, hey, those three pieces will defend the black king and the rooks. They are going to start targeting those weak pawns on the left and the right. Yeah. Those two black rooks, they're developing not in the way we normally see in chess. Normally we see the king castle and then the rooks come to the center. Those rooks are developing up and down the board. And actually, I just did a quick count. Black is one point up. If we talk about pawns, pieces, black is a pawn up. So <laughs> after all of that uh, kind of tactical melee, it's uh, looking good for Magnus Carlsen. And Anish, he lifts his rook up the board. What's the plan? Maybe a defensive maneuver. Maybe he wants to bring that rook across and eliminate one of Black's rooks, but maybe he slow. also maybe he also wants to just step his rook to this one square and then maybe threaten a sacrifice or something, anything to get at the Black King. Could have done that on the last turn. I think that's, that's true. not his idea anymore, Ivanka. I think he's just purely on the defensive, Anish Giri. Um, but Magnus Carlsen, he's going to move one of his rooks. I'm not sure which one, but he's going to move one of his rooks. Oh no, he moves his king. Uh, there we go, just looking on the screen. He dragged his king mm -hmm. to the side there, away to safety. And now there's danger on the board because the black rook is threatening to attack the queen. And that's why Anish gives a check, which is promptly intercepted by the knight. But look at the black king, safe as the proverbial houses. <laughs> yeah, so Anish there, he's about to capture a pawn. He's pausing, he's changing his mind. Look at the thought process from Anish Giri. He's indecisive. He's not sure which direction to go for with that queen. If it can't break through to the black king, then what to do? Is he going to step back and take a pawn? No, he's changed his mind. He's going to bring his rook up the board. Is he going to challenge black's rook at the top there? He is. Will we see a rook trade now? This is how difficult the position is. 
even at these top players in blitz they're not able to trust their instincts it's all about calculation and the rooks are off and uh now the queen will capture no the queen cannot capture the pawn at all no no because uh of course black will also go and capture the pawn that is up for grabs and suddenly black's rook is black's rook is amazing the knight that is sitting next to the king is an aggressive piece so uh the white queen is forced into a defensive role and uh the problem as well is that the queen and the rook are forced to defend pawns mm -hmm. and okay wow i was about to say anish giri he's banking on the fact that magnus carlson's pieces the knights and bishop are tied down defending the king but magnus gives up a pawn he's definitely not materialistic he gives up a pawn in order to activate the black bishop and anish there gesturing looking frustrated leaning back suddenly the black pieces are coming to life black's rook and bishop are teaming up against the same pawn white's rook is a bit stuck no targets white's What's queen yeah, that's why a queen is actually worth the same as three pieces. But the problem is there's three of them. And if they coordinate, if they defend each other, just the fact there are more pieces to attack with can be decisive. So, wow. okay, all the pawns disappearing on that left half. What a game. You're right, Kaya. Black's rook is now about to come across, maybe deliver a check. Black can take white's central pawn with his knight. Mm -hmm. And the three pieces, untouchable. Yeah. Um, the three musketeers. Yeah, exactly. totally. And uh, the rook is just there. It's, its sole job on the board is just to gobble up the pawns. So Anish dropping to nearly under a minute left on his clock. Yeah, both players now around the minute mark. And the clock situation uh, is not in either player's favour, but it's definitely Magnus Carlsen's favour on the board. And uh, it's going to be difficult when you're facing a queen. There's always traps. There's always tricks. That's why he steps back. Look at those black pieces. Literally every single piece defends another piece. And, uh, okay, Anish Giri, meanwhile, he's got fewer pieces to play with. So he uses the white king. I mean, this game, I'm going to go back and study it for hours, I think. Just so much to think about. Okay, the black bishop now attacking white's rook. Breaking a bit of coordination with the pieces, but nope, the bishop is replaced on its previous square yeah, and by that, Black's Rook. And that Black Rook, it's going to relocate itself two squares further down the board. It's going to go and towards protect, the White King. Yep, protecting the bishop and at the same time, like David said, heading at the White King. Yeah, it's going to swing across the board, that Black Rook, and again supreme blitz strategy this is why magnus carlson is the best blitz player in the world always defending his pieces mm -hmm. he doesn't care that he has no queen he's just defending everything look at this bishop steps back he still created this nice little cozy home for the black king i mean that's the safest king i've ever seen even though it's being stared at by white's queen even though it's being stared at by white's rook yeah. that king is super safe <laughs> it's, it's incredibly safe and also um, magnus just limiting all risk whatsoever he just dropped his bishop back to protect his pawn okay so check and and anish just cannot do a thing in us now another pawn drops off the board yeah black's rook has gobbled up all the pawns and black now is two points up two clear pawns all black needs to do is start going for the white king i feel um once the black pieces coordinate it's going to be checkmate maybe we'll see checkmate coming the black pawn can push forward to attack the white queen okay magnus just steps back with his rook deadly threat now of checking the white king from the front with the black rook also for black's knight to jump in towards the white king it's game over i think that white king is doomed there's going to be no way to save this game magnus just needs the finishing touches now the black knights can come into the attack yeah, i was going to say the black knight but magnus says okay it's fine i can just push my pawn and Again, every single one of Magnus's pieces are protected. Yeah. It's as if the Black King has got all his clothes on. The White King, look at it. It's naked. It has no protectors, no defenders around it. It's feeling really vulnerable right now. And uh, the White Queen has found a safe square, but not for long. No. Black's Rook can give a check here in two different ways, two different directions. He steps back, just again, protecting everything, over protecting everything, just in case. And... and uh, well, Magnus is just really perfecting the art of, uh, I was going to say suffering, <laughs> making his opponent suffer. And look at this black pawn, this lone black pawn. The pieces are all perfectly placed for black, so use your pawns now mm. to create the threats. And white just trying to get to the black king, but nothing uh, Anish can do here. Black's king is too safe. And okay, one threat on the board. White's queen is trying to take that black rook because there was a pin. It was undefended. So Magnus again defends everything. He, attacks, he defends his black rook and he attacks white's rook, gaining time. 
and now the Knights finally start to mobilise. They've protected each other for so long, but they will finish off this game. And uh, here it comes. The pawn is closing in on its destination. And uh, another check. And just look how this oh. is just an exercise in dominance. Now it's a queen on the board and that's it. Game over. Magnus Carlsen wins the first tiebreak.